Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week's training, we're gonna build an amazing customer manager. And it's gonna combine all the customer information, invoices, work orders, and contacts into a single screen. We're gonna build this live right in front of you. Every formula, every line of code, you're gonna see everything. I can't wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. We bring you these videos free each and every Tuesday. So if you have not subscribed yet, now is the best time to do that. Make sure you click on the notifications bell so that way you're gonna be alerted when we get brand new videos each and every Tuesday. I appreciate you. This time we're gonna be building a customer manager. This customer manager is going to be based on lots of customer information. We're gonna be able to add and update contacts we're going to be able to combine work orders and invoice listings so you get an idea of just how we can create a customer manager hopefully within an hour we'll see how long it takes i'm not sure but i'm going to try to do my best to get this to you quickly but i want to make sure to get it to you completely so we're going to go through every step i've done a few things just to make things a little bit quicker i've got a customer list you can see i've got some buttons on here so today i'm just going to be bringing over the buttons that might save us a little time we create buttons so often so the least I can do just to save a bit of time is we're going to copy over some of these buttons. So we have a list of customers. We have a list of contacts. That's going to help us move things forward. We have a list of invoices, just some invoice data. And we have a list of work orders. And I'm going to show you how we bring all of that, combine all that into a customer manager. Now this training is going to be unique because what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to create a many to one. And what do I mean by many to one? We have a single customer, but we have many contacts per customer. We have many work orders per customer and we have many invoices per customer. So how do we create a single record on display but have a many to one, many of those files to one? And I'm gonna show you just how we do that with separate databases, separate sheets. So that's what we have here. So let's get started right away on this. And But before I do, I wanna make sure if you have not joined yet, our mentorship is on fire. So now's the time to get in. We're gonna be building an entire accounting application and that includes invoicing, items, inventory, Inventory, full accounting, purchase orders, a full dashboard, share and sync so you can share this application. My goal is to get you completely free of the freelance trap. Not enough money at the end of the month. I want to show you how you can create your own applications and sell them for passive income. That's what the mentorship is all about to get you completely independent and financially free taking those Excel skills and using them. And I wanna get you there. My goal is to get you there. So the mentorship program is all about that. So I hope you'll join us there. I'll include the links down below. All right, let's get started on this week's project. First two columns, what we're gonna do, let's go all the way to say row 31. I'm gonna color this, this is gonna be for our admin. So we're gonna color this gray. I wanna make sure we'll hide these columns eventually. I've just set some rows up, some sizes, so it'll make it a little bit quicker for the developer. Element. So we're going to call this customer manager and then I'm going to bring this all the way over to let's say L and then merge and center that and then I'll give it a color also. I want to make sure let's go all the way to R on this all the way to R because we've got a lot to cover on this and then I'll give it a, just a unique color format those cells. We won't spend too much time on working on the format and then a fill effects. I'm going to give it uh, this medium blue and then uh, lighter blue and this is basically all I did was just switch themes so that we can get different colors. Feel free to switch themes on your own applications as well and I'll just transition this to a little bit lighter color so that we can get a nice fade effect. Again, what's the fill effect going from the medium and then a little bit to the lighter. Okay, that gives us an idea. And I'm gonna format this top. Let's give it, uh, I like the Arial rounded. It's kind of a nice clear font. So let's go with that. And then up to maybe uh, just enough, big enough. Okay, that's good. And also what we'll do is we'll just color all the fields here and then we'll make them white as we go down. So we'll go down to about 31 and then give it that blue color. That's gonna give us that fade effect that we, we really want. So that's gonna help. So the first thing what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we have a selected customer. So in, in I want the user to be able to select a specific customer from a drop-down list. So select customer. And then I'll have this field, perhaps it'll be a little bit bigger. So let's use two fields, merge and center, align the left and color it white. And okay, so that's gonna select the customer. We'll write justify that. I can merge and center this one as well and then write justify again. Okay, so basically I wanna have fields, let's say call it name, 
and then I want to have skip and go type. I want to have a customer type. Also want to have a status and an address so we can have the customer address. We'll use a long full name address and then city down here. And then what else do we want? Perhaps in column H, I want additional fields. I want number like office number and then maybe another mobile number so we can keep track of two different numbers per customer. And we're going to also have different contacts too. So each customer can have its multiple contacts. I can't wait to show that to you. So email and then a website. And then we'll round this out with, um, I want a one, I want this whole line, I want the address to be this long. So let's merge and center this and let justify. Then we'll have city here, I'll put uh, state here. And then I'm gonna put zip code here. Okay, that rounds it out for our fields. And then we just need, actually we need a notes field. So let's put notes down here. I'm gonna create notes up here, and then I'll put the larger field. So let's go with uh, 13 to, 16 here and then all the way across so I'm going to merge and center that and then left justify upper and then color that white okay so now what we can do is we can take our fields we have our customer name here but I want to merge and center this I want to make a larger field merge and center again selecting them and then we'll do city down here office I guess we can color that white selecting them I got a misspelled zip so I'm going to fix that okay so now, but what else I want? I'm going to format those cells, and then I want to put a border around it. I'm going to use the same thing color, but just a little bit darker. I'm going to go with that blue. Giving that the round all the way around, except I'll change the left one to the dotted line. Okay, let's fix that. And then I'll right justify these. I'll right justify these. I can hold down the control. Right justify these here. And so that way we get all of our fields in. And then there we go. So they're right justified now. Now address is going to be much longer. Color that white. It's getting a, together. So now we can see what our form is coming about. Now let's put borders around the rest of our labels here. So you can see how that would work. And then right justify, format the cells. And uh, let's go ahead and put the border around there. We need to increase that. This border color here, but this time we're going to go all the way on the dotted line on the right side and then solid on the top left and bottom and then actually I'm going to make these a little bit longer email and both website would be longer fields so let's merge and center those left justify right click and reset those just to reset those then we're going to fill that fills out our form pretty well okay so that gives us a good idea of what we want now what I want to do is I want to put invoice work orders and contacts also on this screen I'm trying to fit it in all in so that you can see everything here so I want to put something like invoices here we can capitalize that sure and then on this one I want to put work orders and then contacts I want to have a contact list so I want to put like something up here maybe so I call this customer contacts, customer contacts. And it's going to be in double row. So down here, I want to put, let's say, the first, first name and then last name. Because we're going to have multiple ones. You're going to be able to select between those contacts. So I have a table below phone one and then phone two. And then what we'll do is we'll put an email right here. Okay, so we have our customer contacts here, but I want to select from a table down below. So basically what I want to do is I want to have a space for the buttons, a little space for the buttons, and then here I want to put contact list. So list of all the contacts per customer. Call it contact list, and then for, we'll put a first name and then a last name. So, and then starting in probably 16, we'll go all the way down to let's say 29. Okay, so let's uh, highlight all them down to 29, and then work orders, I'm gonna start actually probably in I through K, and then invoices, we're gonna go from D through G. So they all go down to 29, so I'm gonna format these tables. I'm gonna, I'm scrolling down, you can't see it, it's a little bit off the screen, and I'm gonna format, put the same border around that we just used, all the way around, and then I'll put a dotted line just in there so we can see that. And then I'm gonna give it a fill of white, so we can see everything okay that's really what I want pretty good but I do want to put some headers here headers here and I want to match the, the headers here so basically format those cells and then I'm gonna go just to something like uh, the medium so go down to the fill effects use the same theme the same theme go this 
this medium to this lighter, and then we're gonna color the header above a little bit darker. Okay, and then this work orders, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna drag this here, because I want the work orders. And so what we'll do is we'll merge and center this, merge and center this, merge and center this all the way across so we'll drop this down merge and center all those fields and then right click i'm going to format those cells just going down to format fill but this is going to be a fill effects so we're going to change this a little bit darker medium to medium light that gives us the same theme as the rest of it and this is not consistent so let's capitalize this as as it is with the rest of them all right good i like that and now we just need to set up the border so we can see it come together already format list and we'll just go with the same color and then border all the way around with that using that same consistent color inside and outside bring it up all right it looks good let's put some information on here for this i want to keep track of the invoice date and probably the invoice number because we have all that information the status of the invoice and the amount next up on the work order i want the work order date and i also want the work order number keep track of that just like we do the invoice and then also the status of the work order okay so we have everything nice and uh, let's just center everything here accordingly and then what we're going to do is i also want to create some fields for the name last name the phone the phone to and the email so i'm going to right click those format those again just same as we did fill of white border of the same blue color that we're using and also we're going to set all the way around except the dotted line is going to be on the left and i'm going to do just the opposite for this for these fields here holding down the control i'm going to format the cells we want to put that border all the way around except uh, this thick border on the top left and the bottom and then I want to alignment. I'm going to right justify that right with indent. That's okay. And then we go. Let's take a look at that. That looks really good. That's pretty much what I want. Let's uh, add some fade outs to this. Merge and center this so it's consistent with everything else. Format those cells. Give it that same fill that we have been doing everywhere else. Fill effects. See how quickly this can come together. If we have a good plan, it's basically on the design. And I wanna see you create these too. In fact, you can tie these into specific invoices if you want and specific work orders. And we'll do that with contacts. But if you have, if you combine my invoicing training, my work order training, you can create an incredible CRM application just with the training that I've given you. And let's put a box all the way around here so it ties everything in together. And then uh, put a border around here. And then we can bring in our buttons. You'll see it's a little bit quicker since we're... Okay, so we have the idea. I want the contacts to come in here. But I want to put some conditional formatting. So that makes it look a little bit nice. Alternating row conditional formatting with a mod formula. So what we're going to do is go into home. Conditional formatting. Manage rules. I'm going to create a new rule using a formula. And I'm going to use mod equals mod. I already have this automated. But mod row of 2 equals 0. This is going to be for even rows equals 0. That's going to get us and we'll set a fill format. That means every even row. I want to use something like this color but not that dark. So I'm going to go into more colors and just go a little bit lighter on that. That's good. And then click OK. Alright, so that's going to color area. Now it's really nice. It's coming together here. We need to set the same formats for here. So let's format those cells. Put the border all the way around it border all the way around it click OK and then I want to right click just so, just so we are consistent with our theme and then the dotted line on the right okay so looks like we have everything I'm gonna put some buttons up here I'm gonna put some buttons here and then let's format this cells again with the same border just so we're everything is set consistently good so we've built that out in about 15 minutes we've built out this whole design now we have it so let's bring in the buttons and then i'm going to show you how to create this we'll put an icon here so again i i created some previously so it's just a i'm going to use the selection tool and i'm going to click all of them select all of them copy control c and we can unselect it now and then in the custom manager i'm going to paste it now i'm just going to drag them all the way up here because i kind of got them positioned a little bit and we can see just how we would work like right about here that's kind of good. Okay, I'm going to bring this icon over here. All right, so here's what I have. Let's take a look at the buttons that I previously created. And we know how to create buttons. If not, these are just basic shapes. You can check any one of my videos if you want to know how to create these because I did so much. Okay, so I have a button set called Existing Customer Group. What is that? That's a group of buttons. Add customer, update customer, and delete customer. And I also have another group of buttons, and this one's called New Customer Group. 
So two button sets each for different purposes. When a new customer, if I click add customer, I want only these two buttons, I only want these two options available for the user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this group of buttons and I'm gonna display this group of buttons. So when they're entering a new customer, they have two choices, only two. They can save the customer or they can cancel the new. Those are the only two options that I really want to give them. Otherwise, if they cancel new, what's going to happen? I'm going to want to select an existing customer, any existing customer. I want to hide this button set, and then I want to show this button set. So, And I want these on top of each other because only one of them is going to show at the same time. So that way they can be on top of each other because you'll only see one at the same time. All right, what do we have here in the contact? Let's take a look at this. I have the ability to save contact, add a contact, and delete a contact. Okay, so the idea is this, when a user selects a contact from one of the rows here, I want that contact to display here. When they click add contact, I want all this to clear out and I want them to enter contact information. And when they click add contact, I want this add button to disappear. I want this delete button to disappear and I only want to show this save contact. So that's pretty, and then of course when they select any other contact, that will automatically go away. So that's, I want to list all the contacts here. I want to list all the work orders and all the invoices here. So how do we do that? Let's set up some formulas so we can make all of that happen. And of course, when they select a customer from the drop down list here, I want all that customer information to fill out here. I want all the invoices, all the work orders, all the contacts to fit here. So again, let's go over this many to one, many invoices, many work orders, many contacts for one customer. That's what our focus is on this training, many to one, because it's something that you'll use quite a bit when you're creating your own application. All right, let's get to it. Let's start creating some of the more important information that we have that is going to be our hidden section. We want to know when a, when a customer is going to load. That's going to help us. So load customer. I need to know if that's true or false. So let's just set it for false now. We'll put that there. And I want to know the customer ID. Of course, each customer has their own ID. So it's very important that we try the customer ID. Next up, I need to know the customer row. What is the customer row? The row of whatever customer, what row? That would be this row, row. Okay, we can delete these now. We don't need those buttons anymore. The row five, row four, whatever the customer row is based on the customer ID. I'm gonna create two named ranges. I'll do that right now while I'm in here. Formulas, named range, we're gonna create a dynamic named range. First one's gonna be called customer ID. We don't need the space there, customer ID. And what is that customer ID? It's gonna be based on the offset formula. So equals offset. Why are we using offset? We're using offset because as our list grows, so does our named range. So I'm going to include the header in this because I want to make sure if there's no data, there's no error. So we can include the header, but we need to skip one row down. So we're going to start one row down, then comma, comma. And then what I want to do is I want to count all the names in the range. So count A is going to do that for us. What do I want to count? I want to count pretty much everything up to 9999999, whatever. Okay, so we're going to count all those, but since we're including the header, we do need to subtract one. We include the header, why again? Because when there's no data at all on this list, it could prevent an error if we don't include the header. So we include the header, there is no error. So minus one is going to do that, and then comma one, that's the column. So when we tab out of it, tab back into it, we look at the dancing ants and we see that they're completely covering all the data, so we know it's right. So good, I'm going to copy this formula right here and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to create one more. I'm going to call it customer name, customer name. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in here, except all I'm going to do is I'm going to change A to B, because now we're counting the customers. B. And a customer name is a required field, so that's okay. We can count it as long as it's required. It is required, so no problem. So again, we tab over and we see the customer name. Those are the only two named ranges that we're going to create. Customer name, customer ID. Okay, good. So now that we've created those, we can go back into the customer manager. We can continue to work on our fields. So what else do we need other than customer row? I need to know if it's a new customer. Customer new. It's going to be true or false. Let's call this false for now. And I also need to know what the next ID is. That's important. Next ID. What would be the next ID? How do we figure that out? Well, we can use an max and then we can wrap that inside an if error equals let's type it up here it's a little bit easier equals if if error max what do we what's the max the customer id that's the one we just created 
but it's not just the max I want to add one because I want to know the maximum of all the IDs make sure those IDs are numerical if they're text or if there's any text in them this formula won't work okay so plus one but what if there's an error if there's an error I just want to default it to one why would there be an error there would be an error if there's no data so that way it's going to default the first customer ID to one and as you can see our next customer ID is 24 and if we look in our customers we see the last one's 23 so the next one will be 24 that's going to keep track so what I'm going to do is every new customer I'm going to take this new ID I'm going to place it right here in B2 that's going to set us up for the customer ID okay next up what else do I want to add I want to add in a search customer so this customer ID is going to be based on this let's merge and center this I forgot to do that merge and center and left let's check the other fields make sure they're all merged and center I want to merge and center these all here holding the control and I think this one too we should merge and center those and left justify them making sure because when we clear the contents good we're set up everything is right okay so what we want to do basically is when we have a new customer I want to search customer I want to know the customer row based on what they selected here that's really important and I also want to know the customer row based on the ID so it's kind of two different searches so we want to know the real customer row one time based on whatever they select here and one time when they select it uh, based on this ID here so we'll show you that I'll work through that with you so but be, keep in mind I want customer row there so let's call this the search customer row and then I'll put that in here and then I'm, of course I'm gonna put that what else am I gonna do I also want to know the selected contact why do I want to know the select? I want to know what they select. If there's a contact here and they select it, I want to know what row it is. I'm going to use conditional formatting to highlight it. It's going to be really cool. Okay, so what next? I also want to know if the contact is loading. Contact load. What does the contact load mean? When they select something here, it's going to take whatever contact information, it's going to put it up here. It's going to be really nice. And if they make the change, it's going to be saved. Very, very convenient. Let's color all this so we know what uh, what we're looking at here. We'll put some borders around it here just to signify that this is important for our purposes. Okay, so let's put some formulas in. What is the customer row? Well, if the customer ID is one, we know that the customer row must be four right so we can use the customer ID and use that using an if error and then we'll use the match so equals let's type it up here if error I always like if error because I don't want errors when we run VBA code match what are we matching we're gonna look up the customer ID what are we looking up we're looking up this customer ID right here and what is the array customer ID and then we want an exact match now remember we need to add three because we want row four right but if we don't add three it's just going to return one I don't want one I want the row so that's going to be plus three what if there's an error empty all right that's going to get us four and that's just what we want row four is what we want what else okay so let's take a look the selected contact let's add we have data validation here we can add that in right now so when we go into data data validation and it's going to be a list and remember the name range we created equals customer name perfect so the idea is when I select something I want that customer information to load perfect we're almost ready let me move this over a little bit too close for that and of course when the customer ID changes let's say to three it's gonna change the row we don't have a two actually okay so let's go I also want to know the selected contact so let's just say it's 20 I want to put some conditional formatting this is gonna be true or false so I want to put some conditional formatting so when we select the customer it's automatically uh, highlighted so let's highlight the rows we're going to go into home and then conditional formatting and new rule and we're going to use a formula it's going to be a very basic formula equals this which is b12 equals row and then in parentheses and what is the color that I want to give it I want to give it just a contrasting color based on the same theme so we're going to go into the fill effects and then I'll give it this blue and then a darker blue and then of course we need a a font that is contrasting which would be a bold and white that's going to give us a contracting so we'll what are we going to contrast so what we're going to do is we're going to let's just make sure the font is correct yes that's what I want so what we're going to do is av, as we add VBA code we select a contact the line gets highlighted and then the contact loads here so excellent that's the way I want let's make these bold here control B to make them bold stand it out all right looks good or what's next up now we gotta now we're almost ready to write our macro so what's the first thing I want to do I want to be able to load the customer when I select a customer I want that customer to load notice 
how when we change this we also want a row we want to put that customer row so to do that we need to get the row in here equals if error match right what are we matching we're matching this customer name and we're basing it on the customer name name range that we created comma zero that's going to create it but what if there's an error if there's an error i want to blank so five so good so now all i need to do is as we change the customer i need to look at seven and then what i'll do is i'll go into row seven and then i'm going to add, load all this information in we can use data mapping what's data mapping if you're not familiar with that data mapping is the ability to map specific cells with the data in the file and i've added them here to make it a little bit quicker but let me show you what that might be in case you're not familiar with it just yet I'm going, to hold, I'm going to take a screenshot simply by using my software, snag it, and I'm going to take a screenshot of this. And then I'm going to copy that. And then what I'm going to do from my software, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the customer file and I'm going to paste it just temporarily. Now we can get a good look at the data and we have. This makes it a lot faster. So what do I want to do? I've reserved the top row for data mapping. So if I want to, if I know the customer name is in E4 and I know the customer name is stored here, I'm going to put E4 here. Our customer ID, if you remember, is located in B2. Our office number here is located in i4 so i'm going to put i4 here so this helps us quickly having this screenshot here helps us quickly map all the data so i've done that with every single field all right so then now we can delete that so you get the idea every single field is mapped based on the cell here so then all i want to do in vba is simply run a code what kind of code am i going to run i'm going to run a code from column one or possibly column two depending upon whether it's load or save if it's save we just need to use column two because a will already be there but if it's load we're going to load all the information so what do we do so then i'm going to run a loop from a all the way to column m what is column m equals column it's column 13 so we're going to run a loop from either 1 to 13 or 2 to 13 and we're going to loop through these and if i'm loading it i'm going to take this information whatever we know the row whatever is in let's say row 7 column 2 and put it in e4 whatever is in row seven column three and put it in i4 of course it's i4 on this sheet you know and so we're going to do that with every we're going to run that loop and that's how we do a load so let's program that inside the vba and we'll go into the vba code inside the developers if you don't have this developer sheet open of course you can get it through file options and then just click the customize ribbon and make sure developer is selected you can use the shortcut alt f11 will get you there and i've just created four modules to make things go a little bit quicker there's nothing here except some titles of some to give us some guidance we have some macro names so i've done that try to make it look things a little bit quicker and still show you every step so i want to make sure to do that what are we doing we're going to load the customer so we have customer load here and that's the code that i want to write that's the macro that i want to write all that so let's do that right now let's load let's create the macro for that so we need to dimension some things dimension i want to know the customer row as long as long I also want to know the last invoice row why do we need to know the last invoice row because I'm going to run an advanced filter I'm going to determine what invoices are only for this customer and then we're going to need that so we need the last invoice row as long we also need to know the last work order row as long too so we need to know all that and of course what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the last actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to load the contacts in a separate macro and i'll tell you why a little bit later on but i'm not going to put this inside i'm going to use a separate macro and then i'm going to call it and i'll show you why shortly all right and also i still need to know also the customer column as long remember i'm going to loop through all those columns so that's probably we need to know that okay so that's good so now we've dimensioned all the parameters that we need and we're going to be focused on with sheet one sheet one is our customer manager sheet so that's what we're going to focus on if we're going to load we need to make sure remember if i as we change the customer here as we change the customer we want to load it right so it's going to be always based on this row we need this row remember this searches our customer here so if there's an incorrect value here if there's an incorrect value well, it's not going to let us but it's this is going to be empty so let's say if we remove this we need to make sure that b10 is not empty if it is we can't load anything so that's the first check we're going to do inside our code so let's write that right now if dot range b10 dot value equals empty then what do we want to do message box let the user know please select a correct 
custom name from the list okay and then exit sub we we can't do anything else unless we have an accurate customer assuming that we do have an accurate customer now we can assign that customer so the customer row is equal to b10 valued so we can just copy that back it up copy that here and then use it down here as low so we can set the customer row automatically to b10 i also want to make sure that we clear some fields and uh, I, I want to clear all the fields. Now I created this before, so let me just type in, so what I want to do is dot range, I want to clear all the fields in there. And dot, it's a lot of fields, so I'm gonna stop this video and uh, I'll show you once I get it copied in, what it's all about. So basically what I've done here is I've created a lot of fields. Basically all of the fields inside this I want to clear. When I load data, I want to make sure everything is cleared previously. So all of these fields. Now keep in mind that when you have a merge cell, we need to include all. It can't just use E4 when we clear it. it cannot. It's going to create an issue. So if you're having an issue and you're trying to clear E4, it's because it's merged. When we clear E4, it must be E4 through G4. It must be E6 through G6. And of course, in, in this case, it would be E10 through K10. So when we use clear constants, but when we place a value in E4, when we place a value, we only need E4. We don't need to place a value. Value equals E4 through G4. We just need one cell. So keep that in mind. When clearing, we need to encompass all the cells. When placing a value, we only need the first cell. So that's what I why I went E4 through G8. In fact, I covered them all and d20 this is going to clear all the fields so all i did was add those in and use clear contents this will cover but there's no reason for you to watch me type even those in these videos are long enough as it is okay we've defined the customer row already so now all we need to do is run our loop what is that loop that's what i explained to you before for customer column equals 1 to 13 remember m is the last row close our loop always good to close our loop the first thing next customer call and we've defined that so what do we do so again let's just review it real quick basically what I want to do is I want to say e4 is equal to what e4 is equal to whatever is in B and the contact row but how do we know it's in e how do we know e4 e4 is up here so all we need to do is write some code from row one, get whatever's in the current column, in this case two, and put whatever is in, let's say seven here. So how do we do that? Let me write that code for you. And you can see dot range, remember we're focused on sheet one here. What is the dot range in this case? It is sheet two, we're basing, we need to get the cell. I need to get that cell. Where's that cell located? That cell's located in row one of sheet two. So sheet two, dot cells we're using cells because both the column and the row are dynamic and whole values cells what is the row we know the row is one remember that's where it is it's always located in row one and the customer column which is the one that's going to be alternating so this right here is our cell is our cell address whether it's e4 c4 whatever it is so what do we do with that so now dot value equals what is it going to equal it's going to equal based on sheet two dot cells again our customer row and our customer column that's the actual row and the actual column dot value that's it that's all of our loop that's going to load all of our data all of those fields is going to load in just three lines that's called data mapping and that's going to insert our data the next thing i want to do is remember we talked about updating our shapes right if it's an existing customer we just loaded it we know that this this one right here this new customer which is the save and cancel we know that shouldn't be visible that should be hidden and we want to make sure that this button set the existing is displayed because it's an existing customer we want to make sure that the existing customer customer group is displayed so to do that we can just write two lines of code we also have button sets here too we need to update as well so let's do that so dot shapes existing customer group we want to make sure, remember that's the one that's in existing customer. We want to make sure that one's visible equals MSO true. But we want to make sure the new customer group is hidden. So new customer group dot visible equals MSO false, right? That's going to be false because we want that hidden. And then also, what about the context? What about our context? I want to make sure that we our contacts are set just in case they had different contacts. I want to make sure that the save contact that the existing contact group is also displayed because it's an existing contact and I want to make sure the save contact button this one right here save contact button is hidden because that save is only when you're adding a new one so just to double check those we can do those two dot shapes and then here save 
contact button dot dot visible equals MSO false and existing dot shapes existing contact I think it's group I'll double check that group dot visible equals MSO true okay let's just double check those names to make sure we have them right so save contact button and we have existing contact group good so that's what we want so those are I want those hidden okay it looks good let's take a look here and uh, okay we, so as soon as we load it we want it to happen let's take this three we need to this should be remember plus three we need to make sure this is the right row plus three because our Arret is on customer. Let's take a look at that Arret customer. That is located right here on row six. So we want to make sure we add three, just as we, just as we did up here in the customer. So add three. All right. Let's take a quick look at that. We can load that. We still have more to do. We have to load the invoices, the work orders, and the contacts. But let's take a look. I'm going to run that macro. Take a look. Okay, it looks good. Let's left justify this here, and take a look. State Wyoming zip will left justify that here. Okay, so this macro is not done and I got some miscellaneous notes. We can format these. I'm going to hold down the control and go into the more number formats and we're going to go into special and then I'll change this to phone number. Of course, you can format it. Okay, save. All right, it looks good. It looks like everything's up. So now what I want to do is I want to add invoices, work orders, and then a separate macro for contact. So how do we do that? Okay, so the idea is this. Uh, let's go into our invoices and what I want to do is I want to figure out the last row of the invoice and then I want to run an advanced filter based on the customer ID putting the criteria here then the results so for example if we put in a customer ID 1 or customer ID 2 I want all of those invoices to come here and then what I want to do is I want to take all those invoices and then I want to bring them here so how do we do that well the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we have a specific customer ID. In fact, let's make sure we put a customer ID. I'm going to run that macro. Just going to run it here. To me, I want to make sure that we have a customer list. Our customer ID is one because I've got lots of data here for customer ID one. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to put the customer ID here. Where is that ID? Equals. I want to put it right here. Customer ID is right here. Equals this. That is our fixed criteria. Now it is set. Our criteria is set. So we can set that. It's not going to change. And so what I want to do is I want to look at this criteria and I want the results only those invoices with a customer ID of one I want them to appear here and when I when they appear here I want to bring them right back and put them right in here all the way from uh, D20 through G29 I'm going to do the same exact thing with work orders so again I'm going to take the work order again equals customer manager and then again ID B2 same exact thing with context I've got context let's do that equals the only difference with context is I'm going to create a separate macro for that and I'll show you why okay so now we have a criteria set for both invoices work orders and contacts so let's run let's run the macro and let's get invoices and work orders inside that and then we're going to add the contacts in so let's write some code to do just that now that we have the shapes all set let's continue on with our code okay so let's load the invoices load invoices so how do we do that well first thing we need the last invoice row so last invoice rows equal to invoices are on sheet three sheet three dot range a and then we'll just go use a large number 99 dot end excel up dot row so that's going to get us our last invoice so now we're ready to run our advanced filter so what is our advanced filter it's going to be basically sheet three dot range what is it a well, let's bring this down so we can see everything just as we're going to just as we're entering it now we can see both the code and the sheet at the same time Okay, so, and let's switch it over to sheet the invoices because I'm, what I want to do is I want to start here A2 all the way through E using the criteria G2, G3 and bring in the results over to I2 through L2. All right, so let's write that code in. Sheet 3 range, what is it? A2 through E and the last invoice row and the last invoice row dot advanced filter excel copy and we're gonna we're gonna set the criteria criteria range colon equal to what sheet three dot range g2 through g3 g2 through g3 
Good. Now what about the copy to range? Copy to range colon equals again sheet three dot range. This time we're going to be focused on I2 through L2. I2 through L2. Good. Then then all we need is unique equals false. It's fine for this colon actually colon equals false okay so now we have it set up now we have our advanced filter set up so let's run that just so we can see what it looks like and uh, make sure we add in ia misspelled that okay so good that's what we want now we have our criteria look only only invoices we don't remember we don't need to bring the customer id i only need the data so i'm going to take now all i need to do is take this data and bring it right into the customer manager so i can do that so i can say in this case d20 through g29 equals basically all i can just equal we can equal all of this whatever whatever however many rows so for example if we know we have a specific if we know we have 10 rows here all i need to do is go into the invoice and go 10 rows down here and just uh, so in this case it would be i3 through l12 so we can do that and we can write that with a line of code but i want to make sure that we're going to clear usually running advanced filter clears out the data but let's add a line of code before the advanced filter just to clear out this data i want to make sure that we're clearing it out just in case so before the advanced filter so sheet three it's a good practice to do that dot range i3 3 through L and then we'll just use a large number 999 dot clear contents okay that's going to clear any previous results okay very good so now we've going to run that and now what I need to do is the next time I wrote is dot range I want to bring the data in what do I want to do what's the range again just as the invoice range that's what we're going to d20 is what we spoke of d20 through g29 that is the that is the area of the invoice one equals what does it equal we're going to just use it we're using 10 rows so if we know we're using 9 or 10 10 rows in this case we just need to bring in 10 rows from the results so to do that we can just write in sheet 3 dot range and the results of course start in i3 and then they go over to l12 so we can use that all the way to l12 dot value that's going to bring in all bring in all invoice data okay so we're good to go we're good to go with the invoice let's run this code take a look back in our custom manager great now we have all of the information we can format this as a currency and then we can center this that's going to look nice center this as well and uh, all right good now it's coming together now we just need to do the same exact thing for the work orders relatively simple so skip a line and call this load work orders almost the same exact thing so let's switch to the work order sheet here and then we're going to start typing in our code again i need the last invoice row the last work order row, last work order row what is that going to equal sheet in this case work orders look at on sheet four dot range we'll use a again a 999 dot end xlf that's going to get us a dot row that's going to get us a last row again i also want to clear the contents let's just copy this and adjust the uh, range accordingly so we want to and of course the sheet number two this is going to be sheet four and in this case the range is going to be h through j so let's update that h through j perfect and of course we could pro i'm going to type in the advanced filter because if i type it in it'll show you a little bit sheet four dot range what's the advanced filter in this case again it's starting at a2 through d and the last work order row dot advanced filter we're going to copy to another area and we're going to use the criteria range is going to be equal to again sheet four dot range f2 through f3 f2 through f3 what's next copy to range copy to range colon equals what's the range we're copying to sheet four dot range in this case it's h2 through j2 h2 through j2 okay and again unique colon equals false it's fine false or true is okay that's not important for necessarily and then again we're going to copy it over then all we need to do is copy it over in this case what are we going to bring it over again dot range 
where is it coming from? Let's take a look at that range real quick so we know. Dot range in this case, we're going to start out at I-20 all the way over through K-29. I-20 through K-29. So let's do that. I-20 through K-29. Dot value equals sheet four dot range dot range and then what is the results our results start of course on h3 h3 so let's h3 through j so let's do that h3 through j and if we're starting on three and we're going 10 rows we know that we want that over to j12 j12 dot value okay that's going to bring in bring in all work order data Okay, good. Let's save the code and let's run that. I always like to run it automatically. Let's run that and take a look at that. Now we have our work order dates. Perfect. I really like that. That's looking very good. Let's left justify these just for the sake of being the same. Okay, good. So now we have our work order. So now I'm going to write a separate macro on our context. And I'll show you because the reason I'm writing a separate macro is there's two instances in which I want to load context. I want to load context when I load the customer and I want to load context when I save or update a, contact, a customer contact. If I add a new one, I also want it to load. So there's a few instances where we want to run the same macro. For that reason, we're going to use a separate macro for this. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a few little cleanup things we need to do on this work, on this macro to do that. I also want to make sure that we're going to set B6 to false because this is no longer a new customer for sure. B6 must make sure to go to false. So dot range B6 dot value equals false. Set new customer to false. Good. So we've got that covered. Now let's continue with our next macro, which is the load context. And it's almost going to be exactly the same as what we did. Almost no different, except that I just wanted a separate macro. So that's all. So in this case, again, with sheet one, we're still focused on sheet one because that's the primary sheet. We want to dimension the last contact row as long. And I need to, and of course, the contacts are located in sheet five, so we can say last contact row equals sheet five dot range A999 dot end XL up dot row. Okay, good, that's gonna get us the last contact row. Okay, good, so let's clear the contents. I wanna clear any results. Why do I wanna clear? Just to be safe. So in our contacts, again, I'm gonna take this information and I'm gonna clear it all the way from L3 and Q and all the way down. So sheet five dot range L3 dot Q colon Q nine 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 dot clear contents. Clear previous results. Okay, now we're ready to run our advanced filter. So with sheet five dot range, A3 is gonna be our first row. In this case, it's A3 through G and the last contact row. Dot advanced filter, Excel copy, comma, criteria, range what is that colon equals and the criteria of course is j2 through j3 equals sheet five dot range j2 through j3 that's going to get us our criteria and the next up is our copy to range copy to range colon equals what are we copying it over to we're going to copy it over to l2 through q2 sheet five dot range L2 through Q2. All right, good. Now we've got that advanced filter. And now we're just going to say unique colon equals false. Okay. So now we have our now we have all of our contact load and I'm going to bring the contacts over here. Now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all the contacts over and I'm bringing it all over here, right? But what I want to do is I want to hide. I'm going to hide this, right? We're bringing it over and then eventually we'll hide it. We'll give it the same color. I really want all the data here, but I don't want all the data displayed. So I'm going to bring it M all the way through R. But I'm going to bring it all the way, M16, all the way down to R29. Bring it and then hide the data eventually. So it'll look nice and it will, it there's a reason we want it all in. So let's bring that in. Dot range 
M16 through R29 dot value equals sheet 5 dot range L3 through let's put that pull that up so we know where we're getting it from we can bring this up now and then the uh, bring in the co contacts here L2 through Q L through Q is where we have it so L3 through Q and then of course we want how many rows we're gonna put in 13 rows so Q 16 dot value and that's gonna bring over that's gonna copy over the contact copy over context okay let's run that and I'm just going to run this macro here and see where we're at and make sure we're on the same page here. Run that. Okay, we got our, we should bring in three contacts now. Let's check over in our custom manager. Good, that's just what I want. So then the idea is basically to change this font to blue and then you don't see that. But that's what I really what I want. I'll keep it before we're finished. Hopefully if I remember, we're going to make this blue so we can see what it looks like on the finish. So the idea now is to select a contact. Okay, so there's one more thing we have to do. I need to take this macro here, load context, and I need to bring it up, and I'll just drop it in here. And then I'm going to paste it in here and just call it load context. So now all we need to do is run this one macro here, and it's going to load everything in. So when do we want this to run? I want to run this macro when F2 changes. So we can write that code right now. That's going to be based on when we make a change to the sheet. So that's a worksheet change. So if we go into the customer manager and we go into the worksheet and the change event, not the selection change, the change event, then we want to write some code in here. What is that code that we want to write? If not intersection that's auto hotkey that I used to automatically type this F2 is nothing and I want to make sure and there's a few things and range and the target we can do range F2 actually we can use the customer row I want to make sure this custom row is not blank right so let's just double check that that customer row F B10 cannot be blank right because that's going to load our customer and so let's do that B10 dot value does not equal empty then what do you want to do then load actually customer load I'm gonna run that then what I want to run that macro what macro is that this one right here customer load so we can copy this macro go back into the customer manager and now every time we make a change to F2 assuming that B10 does not equal empty it will load it so let's take a look at that let's load the next one Perfect, that's what I want. These buttons are too close. I'll move them over a little bit. Now what I want to do is when I select a contact, I want to make sure that contact information loads up here. So how can we do that? How can we get all that information to load up here? Again, we can use data mapping for this. Basically what I want to know is this column here, first name should go into N4. This column should go into N6 and so on. So let's use data mapping and we'll use it down here. And I'm going to map those columns to those fields. N4, N6, N8, N10, and N12. Okay, what columns are those? Let's just look at those columns so we know what we're looking at, what columns we're going to run through. We want to run through columns 13 all the way to 17. So we can map those. Let's make that center that so we can see. So I'm going to run a loop from 13 through 17 when I load that contact. I'm going to take whatever's in the row that they used to have selected. I'm going to place this in N4. I'm going to place this in N6, N8, N10, and N12. So let's do that. Let's write some code that we can do that. And I also want to know when we select this row, I want that row automatically to go to selected contact row here in B12. So how do we do that? We're going to call that contact load. And let's write some code. And I've got a module already for that here under the contact macros. We're going to call that contact load. So let's do that now. Into the contact load, I want a dimension. I need to know the contact row, dimension the contact row as long. And since we're looping through columns, we also need to know the column. So contact column as long. Also, I'm going to with sheet one. We're focused, of course, on sheet one. And then what I want to do, dot range, I want to make sure B13 is true. I want to set a contact load because I need to know when a user makes a change here I want to save that change but when we're loading a contact from the list that's also a change so I need to differentiate between those two changes we're gonna use this b13 true or false to differentiate between that and let's do that so b13 is gonna to go to true and then it's gonna to go to false equals 
true, and then I'm gonna change it to false once we get done. So let's write that now, and then we'll put the code in between those. False, set contact, set contact, load to false, and then to true here, set contact, load to true. Okay, so then our, so then our code's gonna run in between here. What do we want to do? Again, we're just gonna run, first we need to set the contact row, that's gonna be important. Contact row, we know that's the selected row, it's gonna be located in B12, equals dot range B12. That is our contact row. Next up, we're ready to run our little loop. For contact column equals, again, remember what it was? 13 to 17, was that what it is? Let's double check here. 13 to 17, correct. I want to run that loop so we can pull in these ranges here. I need to pull in all those ranges. So we can do that with this. Equals 13 to 17 and close our loop. Next contact column. Okay, next, so what are we going to do? Again, dot range, what is the range that we're focused on here? The dot range is located in dot cells what column what row is it where where are we going to pull it i'm going to pull it from they're all going to be in row 30 but the column's going to change so 30 is the row the column is going to be contact column so inside this range is going to be our cell so then we can close that dot value equals what's it going to equal it's going to equal dot cells dot dot cells contact row contact column dot value contact details all right that's perfect so now all we need to do is set run the macro that's going to one put the only thing we're missing so far is i need to know what row right we have to put that row when we select something i want to put that row right here in the select a column b12 so let's do that that's on selection chain so let's run that macro and let's add that actually we're going to take that contact. I'm going to copy that. We're going to go into the custom manager, and this time it's on selection change. Selecting what? Well, if a user makes a selection anywhere from M16 all the way over to N29, N20, M16 through N29, I also need to want to make sure that at least there's a value in the first name. So let's do that. Inside the code, if not intersection, M16, M16 through N29 is nothing and I want to make sure well you just then we'll do that here I want to set the target run no matter what depends range let's do this and range we want to make sure M M and the target row then what then what first of all I want to set the row range B12, B12 dot value equals the target row. That's important. We need to know the row. And then what I want to do, I want to run the macro. So good. Now when we select this, it's going to load our bank. All we need to do is format these cells into the general. Again, we're going to set, format those as phone numbers. So more and then special and then phone number here. And then I'll left justify that here. All right. Good. That's looking really good. So actually, I we could probably not run the macro on a blank, right? Nah, probably not. So let's do that. So what we want to do is we want to make sure there's at least a value. You could do that, but let's make sure there's a value at least in M before we run that macro. So let's add, let's add this and range M and the target dot row dot value does not equal empty okay so this ensures that at least m has a value so now when i select nothing nothing's going to happen but when i select a row with a value the context load excellent okay we're really making progress now i want to save this when i make a change i want to i want to add a customer and i want to update a customer here so how do we do that we can run a macro with save so let's do that let's run the macro that we're going to actually save the customer so we can go back into our module and we also have a new one here module called customer save or update we're going to use the same one on that so how do we do that well again we're going to mention the customer row as long and the customer column as long customer column as long again we need to do both of those and with sheet one again we're focused on sheet one as always we want to make sure that there's actually a customer name when saving i don't want to save it if there's no customer name we do need to check to make sure that e4 contains a value 
we do need to make sure that e4 contains a value. So if dot range e4 dot value equals empty, then message box, please enter a customer customer name. Exit sub. Nothing we can do unless they exit sub. Okay, and if that we need to make sure that we can at least put that there. Let's then okay that looks good so now let's continue on with code now assuming that there is a customer and we can continue to save it the first thing i want to do is i need to determine is it a new customer or it's an existing customer i'm going to use the same macro regardless if it's a new or an existing so let's write some let's just write a little note here determine if new or existing and how do we know what's going to be the differential if we know a customer row here this is going to be empty if there's an error if a new customer so we're going to use b4 is empty if b4 is empty then we know that it's a new customer so let's do that if dot range b4 equals empty then new customer else existing customer and if Okay, very good. So if it's, a, if it's a new customer, where are we gonna get the row from? The row is gonna be the first available row in the customer sheet, in this case, 26. So let's define that inside the code, at least for the new one. Customer row dot, dot value equals, what's our customer sheet? Sheet two dot range A9999 dot end XL up dot row plus one first available row first available customer row that's going to be our first available customer row what else do i want to do if it's a new customer i want to set the customer id i only want to do this for new customers right something i only want to do i want to set the customer id i want to put it right here and i only want to do this for new customers what else do i want to do i want to take that customer id i want to put it right here into b2 because that's only for new customers so let's do that let's write that code so the first thing i want to do is sheet two dot range a and the customer a and the customer, we've already defined it, customer row dot value equals what? What's it gonna equal? It's gonna equal the next customer or whatever the next ID is. In this case, it's B8. So we can add that in equals dot range B8. That's gonna be the next customer ID number. And one more thing I really wanna do, I wanna put that in B2. So dot range B2 two dot value equals what equals b8 whatever's in b8 i want to put that there as well all right that looks very good now we have it set up in fact let me just reverse these i think i'd rather put this b2 first because i don't want that calculating that max calculate right, it's just a better order i think okay so the first thing we do is put it in b2 take that next id and now we're ready that's all we need to do for new but what if it's an existing if it's an existing we know the customer is already in b4 so customer actually we can just copy this here save a little bit of time this video is long as always so row equals you know it's an investment in your time customer row all right customer row okay so now we have defined whether it's a new or existing customer and we're set up everything else that we're going to do is regardless if it's a new or an existing customer and again we're going to use data mapping and basically the same loop that we used before that i explained for but this time the only difference is we're not going to use column one so what i'm saying is let's just review it this time we've already set the customer id so we don't need to start at it column one we can start at a column two two all the way over to 13 gonna run that loop so we just don't need to start it in one in this case so let's do that for customer column equals two to 13 and then next customer column and what do we want to do again our ranges we're looking here in column one B I four remember I explained that to you so that's what I'm looking for so and but this time we're saving two saving two so we what are we saving so in case what i'm going to do is i'm going to look in i4 whatever's in i4 i'm going to place it in the customer row whatever's in k4 i'm going to place it let's say it's a new customer i'm going to place it here so we're looking for that this time so sheet 
two dot range. What is the range? In this case, actually, it's going to be cells because dynamic cells customer row comma customer column dot value. What is it equal equals again dot range. Now, what is the range where we're looking at? Remember, this is with sheet one dot range, but we're looking. Where's that range? That range is here, here, here. So that's what I need to put in sheet two dot cells. The row is one. The column is the dynamic column, of course, is customer column. That is what's going to tell again and value dot value. So there we have it that this is right here. This is our range. This is our cell range over here. So that's all we need to do. It's very, very simple. And the last thing we need to do is just update the button sets. And so the same as load customer load again. So let's just copy these buttons here going to be the same because it's now and it's if it's already saved, it's an existing button set. So we just need to do that. So go back into the customer save and then paste those button sets right here. All going to be the same. It's no longer a new customer. So dot range of B six must also go to false equals false existing existing customer okay that is it that's all we need to do to save it so good so let's save our application and uh, let's go ahead and try that let's assign the macro to this button and this button I'm gonna right click it and I'm assign the macro and assign that to customer save and update right here okay Good. So now let's click that and see if there's any issues. Nice. Okay, it's working perfect. Let's change this to California and then update the customer and let's look in the customers here and we can see that it's been updated to California. Perfect. That is working really good. It's now saving there. So what else do we need to do? I want to add a customer now. Let's add the customer. We can write a macro to do that. So let's do put it in here, customer miscellaneous macros, and I have customer add a new. So how do we do that? That's pretty much all I want to do is clear the fields when we ready and get get it ready for adding a new one. So of course we can focus on with sheet one. Die, I want to set B6 to true this time. Dot range B6 value equals true set to new customer. Set new new customer to true. Okay, so I also want to make sure our existing shapes dot shapes the existing customer group must go to false, right? I want that hidden. It's no longer an existing dot visible equals MSO false, right? And then I want to show the new one. So dot shapes new customer group that should be visible dot visible equals MSO true so it's visible okay perfect now what I want to do is again I want to take all those ranges that we added in load I want to clear those contents basically it's I want to do this clear all the existing data so I'm going to copy this and inside our miscellaneous I'm just going to paste them right here that's all we really need to do so all I need to do is now just take this macro and assign it to this add customer so I'm going to hold down the control both shapes right click here click assign macro and this one's going to be called customer add new click OK and then we'll click the button and see if there's bug let's check existing customer forgot the T here OK let's reset that perfect that looks very good that's what really what I want to do we should also clear out F2 as well just in case let me add that in there I want to clear that out because we're for adding a new one we don't need to clear that F2 through G2. Make sure we got both of those since it's a merged cell. So let's now let's assign the cancel new. When I cancel new, what do I want to do? When I cancel new, I want to take whatever's in the first customer. I just want to load that customer in. But again, I want when I want to change this, that's working perfectly now. Okay, good. I like that. I just don't like it's a little bit too close for that for my taste there. All right, move it over a little bit. So let's do add new customer and let's program in the cancel new. So when I want to cancel new, basically I want to take whatever the first customer, assuming that there is data, and put whatever is in B4, I want to take that and put it right in F2. So how do we do that? Let's write some code on that. Customer cancel new. If first I want to check if sheet two dot range B4 dot value does not equal empty, then sheet one dot range f2 dot value equals what is it going to equal it's going to equal sheet two b4 
equals sheet two B four. So basically, it's going to load just the first one just to cancel. So when we go out of that, let's now hold down the control, and then I want to click on these, and I'm going to assign macro, cancel new. Perfect. So now when we cancel new, it's automatically going to load that. That's perfect. That's just what I want. Okay, so we have update, we have add customer, and I also want to save the customer. Let's click on that. Please enter customer name. That's already been assigned. Assign that. I think that was previously from the previous sample. Assign macro just to double check. Customer, save, customer, save update. So click OK. We want to make sure. So that's a please enter customer name. Of course, we need a customer name. I don't want to enter Fredders, Fred. And then office one two three and i'm not going to enter all the data here because it would take too long and then notes test okay save the customer good let's check our customers and make sure that that got entered up oh, wrong row so let's make sure it gets entered into the right row so add a customer and we want to make sure that when we create a new customer b2 gets cleared out very very important so let's do that let's make sure b2 right customer b two must also be cleared out right there's no customer so that's me let's cancel the new add a customer good that's good now it's going to add a new row so now when we add fredders fredding fred and then we add some new notes fred i like that name did you notice save the customer now we go now it's at the bottom perfect that's what i want i want it all the way at the bottom not the top so we got to make sure we clear that out customer id must be cleared out always want a new customer okay so we have add customer that's done we have save customer we have cancel new that's done we got to do delete customer and uh, that's it and then we'll focus on the contacts here just updating so we're almost done let's do the delete customer i've got that right here so what i want to do uh, basically i just need to know the customer row and then we can delete it so we're going to dimension customer row as long okay so the customer row we know it now we just need to make sure that before that there is actually a customer row so if sheet one dot range b four dot value does not equal empty then we can continue on then what do we want to do then customer row of course that's going to equal b4 we already have it here we'll just see we don't need sheet one it's going to be small equals g1 that's the customer bro then all we need to do is delete it sheet to dot range customer row and quotes colon quotes and customer row dot entire row dot delete that's going to delete the entire row all right that's it and then what i want to do is i just want to run another macro to cancel to maybe to get out of that mode so we can run the macro called customer cancel so that's going to run the macro that cancels the new so now when we delete it it's going to delete automatically so let's try that we have the row set delete the customer let's assign the macro right click assign macro customer delete click ok and now delete customer perfect that worked great it's now gone let's look in the customers it's now gone that was the first one that was there now everything else now if i want to delete the other one we created we can just scroll down all the way down to the bottom fretters fretting and we can delete this one too excellent so now it's gone now the two new ones we created are gone automatically excellent so what else do we want to do now what i want to do is i want to be able to change contacts and i want that contact for information and i want to add new contacts so let's go back into the macro and write some more code so we can get that that will be back into the contact macros so we have contact load here but let's add contact save new and contact add new we've got two of them to add so let's do contact save new so how do we do that so basically what i want to do is if there's i need to do two things really i need to if there's any change here i need to figure out if there's a change here i want to make sure those changes get saved inside the context inside here and i want to make sure that the right information is saved i also want to make sure that if the user adds a new one a brand new contact gets added below so let's take a look and let's write some code for that so the save new if they're in the new mode we need to save new so how do we do that we're going to dimension the contact database row as long and the contact database column as long as well contact we're going to do again we're going to do a data mapping loop just like we did before but using both 
row and column is long, as long. So we need to define those. So with sheet one, first I want to make sure that N4 does not equal empty. What is in N4? I want to make sure that they've at least added a first name. I'm going to make that required. So let's make sure, just like we did in the customer, if dot range N4 dot value equals empty, then message box, please enter a contact first name. Exit sub. And if okay, so we have that. I want to make sure that at least they before they move on that they add at least a contact first name. Now that we have that, we can set the contact database row. We know what that is. What is that going to be? That is going to be the first available row in sheet five. Let's look at that contacts. The first of in this case would be twenty eight. So let's determine that the first available row. So sheet contact database row equals sheet five dot range a nine 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 dot n xl up dot row that's plus one that's going to be the first available row first available contact row good so now that we have the row now we're ready to run again we're going to use data mapping and i've already set it up for you look b2 is what is our customer ID, N4 is our first name, N6, N8, N10, N12, same thing, right? Just like we had here. All this information is mapped out, so all I need to do again is run a loop automatically. I've already set that up to save a little time, so in the context, we just need to run that loop. So let's run that loop using our variable contact database column. For contact database column equals we're going to run it one to six one two six we got six columns so we'll run it there two two six next contact database column okay so what do i want to put in here it's very very simple i just want to make sure sheet five dot range dot cells contact database row dot contact comma contact database column dot value equals what equals dot range and then what is it based on sheet five again our, our contact here dot cells row one our mapping is in row one contact database column dot value right we're going to go all we're going to do is we're going to say what's in n4 what is in n6 put it in our new row what is in N10? Put it down here. So that's all we need to do, really, using data mapping. Very simple, just three lines of code. That's why we always do that. Okay, but one more thing. What I want to do is I want to put the row, and I need to put the row in. This is important because, and because when I bring the data back in here, right, if I make a change, if I make a change to this guy, I need to know to look to what row in the database. For example, let's say I make a change and I change him to Dexter butter right let's say I call him Dexter butter I want that change to be reflected automatically in the context I want to I want this change to change to Dexter butter right but how can I do that I need to know what row Dexter is located on right we need to know and in this case of course Dexter is located right here at 11 but we need to know that so how do we do that well we're gonna pull it right from here in fact it's 10 actually He's located in 10. We'll update that. Actually, need to update those. Let's update the rows here so our existing data is not so good. Let's update five and just want to update those. So good. So we have that. I'm going to update the existing data. So we put the existing data. We want to make sure that the row, so that Dexter Butter in row 11 is here in row 11. I want to make sure that that gets properly added in okay so how do we do that okay now we've have it now we have it updated right dexter butter located in 11 so how do we do that we want to make sure that it's row 11 so we need to add that row inside and make sure we add it in the context right here so we can do that with just one line of code so again sheet five dot range what what focus was focused on here g that's where they're going to put in that row and contact database row dot value equals what equals a context database row contact database row that's going to add the row in automatically 
all right very very simple so now it adds it in automatically it adds it in so it's a great we, another way to do that another way to do it is like this is add the formula in, and that helps if you're going to be deleting then it helps equals colon we can also do this quotation mark equals row that's another way to do that if you're going to be deleting rows then you want to use a formula okay keep that in mind if you're deleting it then use a formula that works just as well but this helps if you're deleting it then the rows automatically update okay so now we have that so perfect so now we have the ability to save a new contact but what about add new when we add new just a few lines of code very very simple so let's write that code in as well with sheet one what do I want to do? I want to clear out some information. I just want to clear out all the data. So let's do that. What do I want to clear out? I want to clear out all this all the way from N4 to N12. And I also want to make sure to clear the selected row. And in this case, it would be B12. So let's clear that information in. So dot range B12 and then N4 through N12. N12 dot clear contents clear existing contact and then also want to update the button sets right we're since we're in the add new mode I want to make sure that the existing contact group is hidden and the new one gets displayed so we can do that just two lines of code dot shapes existing contact group dot visible equals MSO false and then dot shapes save contact button it's just a button a single button dot visible equals mso true perfect so now add new and that's all we need to do with add new so let's clean that up a little bit and then assign those macros to the button so add the contact holding the control i'm going to right click assign the macro contact add new good and then let's go ahead and uh, add that new contact perfect it's working nice now let's click on this and assign the macro, right click, assign macro, contact, save new here. Good. So let's add in, let's add in Jimmy Buffett and then add in some phone numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, and then email and then just put Fred at Fred. Okay, so now we can click save contact. I think it's been saved, very good. But we wanna do more. When I save a contact, I wanna make sure that contact loads. So let's add in that additional functionality. Let's take a look here in the contacts here and take a look down. Jimmy Buffett got added twice, so we don't need to add it twice, but let's update that so we can make sure that it gets only added once and we're gonna update and load automatically. So let's continue on with our macros and that would be in the save new. What do I want to do? I wanna actually load it, so let's do that. So we just have to continue a little bit with our code here. We're nearly done. So I'm gonna run the macro called load context because I want that new contact to be inside there, contacts. We have that already. And also I wanna update the button set here. So dot range B12, what do I wanna do? I wanna automatically load it. Again, here's, let me show you what I really wanna do. So let's say we reload the context and our new contact is down here. I wanna figure out what row it is. I wanna select it. I wanna put that row right in B12. So let's do that after we load it. B12 is now equal to dot range M29, which is the last possible row, dot end XL up, dot end XL up, M29, dot end XL up, dot row. That's going to give us the last row. And then I also want to update the button sets, right? It's no, once we've saved it, it's no longer new. So dot shapes, existing contact group, dot, dot visible equals MSO equals MSO true and then of course dot shapes and then the same one dot shapes the new one new contact new new contact button dot visible dot visible equals MSO false right that's no longer hidden all right good I think we're done with that let's take a look here let's save our code and let's go ahead and click save contact and then debug it and make sure new contact button. That should be save the contact button. Save, save. Okay. 
All right, that looks perfectly good. I like that. I like it. So now, although we have two Jimmy Buffett's, but now we now we can select on and we can delete the duplicate here into the context. We don't need two of them. Perfect, because now we're not going to be inside the new mode anymore. So now let's try that again. And then let's add Amy Smith and then save the contact. Good. That's what I want. I want Amy Smith to automatically be selected. Great. We're almost done. We have to do one more thing. Now we have an existing contact. I want to add Amy's phone number, but I want that phone number to be saved under Amy automatically here. Notice it didn't save, but I want it to save. How do we do that? Well, we can use just a little bit of code. So how do we do that? Well, what is it going to be based on? It's going to be based on a change, based on two things, based on a change of anywhere from N4 to N12. And what I want to do, I want to save that to our contacts. But how do I know where to save it? How do I know if it's in this column, this column, this column, this column? What we can do is you can use data mapping, column two, three, four, five, and six. Again, so let's set that up. What do I know? I know I'm gonna put customer names in column two of that database. So let's put two there. We know that last name is three, this is four, this is five, and this is six, right? So we know that. Now we know we've mapped the column. We have mapped the column to that. So let's put this on the left so we can see it easier. So now we know we know the row. How do we know the remember? We know the row because it is going to be the database row. Where's the row? It's right here. And how do we know this row? We know this row because it's right here. So 20, again, R20 is where the customer row is. R20 is where the customer. So this is the row of context. So if we know all that, we can easily write some code to update that. Let's write it now. And of course, that's going to be on worksheet change. So let's go back into the customer. And remember, we're basing it on change. If we change, the user changes something. So let's write some code. If not intersect, what is the range? The range here is going to be N4 through N12. So if the user makes a change between both of those, and we want to make sure that B13 is not false. We want to make sure that B13 is not false. Why is that? We want to make sure that it's not currently loading, right? Because when we load it, there's also a change. So we want to make sure that B13 is, is false. Okay, we want to make sure B13 is false. We want to, we want to make sure that B13 is false. So let's write that. And range B13 dot value equals false means not on contact load and what else I also want to make sure that there's a row we need we, we must be a row we have to have a row here so b12 cannot be empty so we got to check that too so let's do that and range b12 dot value does not equal empty then then we're ready to go then we can write the code so now it's relatively easy i want to know the contact database row dimension the contact database row as long and where can we find that row that row is going to be located in column r so contact contact database row is equal to dot range r is the column but what's the row the row and where's the row? The row is here, right? The row is right here in B12. So the row is B12, 20 in this case. So we can write that code. And dot range B20, B12 actually, B12 dot value. So our row is in B12. Perfect. So that's going to get us our contact database row. Now that we have the contact database row, we can make the update. And our car contacts are sheet 5 dot cells we know the row contact database row what about the column where is the column the column is located where is it the columns here it's one column to the right of whatever column is three or the column is four so all we need to do is the column is equal to dot equal to target dot offset no rows offset but one column to the right dot value dot value equals the target dot value okay let's take a look at that now when I added phone number in four five four five four five now when I add a formula let's fix this okay obviously we don't need dot here we're on the sheet so we don't need dot range sometimes I automatically put that in okay perfect now let's take a look in the contacts 
and now let's look excellent so it's been saved in the right place now let's give her an email test at test okay and see if we save the email nice very very nice so now it's saving now it's automatically saving if we select we can update a contact and of course we no longer need this remember I told you we're gonna hide this so take this and uh, hide it we can hide it by changing the font color change that font color to the same as the background we actually don't need these rows and but we do need this mapping so we can hide that too again changing the font color now let's take a look quick look and refresh to make sure we have everything right before I release this out to you all right it looks really good I'm really glad you're able to join me on this if you do like these workbooks I have over 100 available for just $37 so make sure you pick that up I'll include the links down below that helps keep these videos free I hope you enjoyed this training on the customer manager and thanks so much we'll see you next week